What's up, friends? I'm down in the basement, uh, I'm gonna check out some peppers and some marigolds. Actually, let's go in and check them out right away. We've been working on our marigolds and peppers. Coming in real good. That's our plan to uh, stay safe and healthy around here. That's always our plan. We like to have plants growing, um, eating that healthy food, keeping our immune system up as much as we can. But obviously with this coronavirus going around, uh, it's even more important nowadays. Uh, it's pr looking pretty wicked out there. I tried to make a video, give you guys a little warning about it uh, a month or so ago, February 5th. I seen it was coming this way. Uh, a couple of the first cases out west in Oregon and California did not know anybody from China and hadn't met anybody from China. So right from the off the bat, I knew that this was spreading in America um, because some people hadn't met anybody from China. So it was obviously here um, right from the start. They didn't know about it in China until it had already spread quite a bit. So by the time they uh, shut down Wuhan and the uh, province it's in, it was already too late. As much business as we do with America, and China and the whole world really doing business together. There's pretty much no way to isolate a pandemic like this. Um, as much airline traffic as we have, it, it was just, it was coming here or is already here. So uh, as much as Trump's trying to say that, you know, he's doing the right thing by shutting the, the country down to Europe and China and other places like that. I mean, it might've been a good thing if he could have did it, back in December when they were first starting to hear about this in China and figure out what they had on their hands, but it's a little too late now. Bottom line is it's here. All you can do is uh, get your sleep, definitely be eating healthy, you know, get your, get your basic supplies all covered, but what it really comes down to is just eating healthy, getting your sleep, and avoiding sick people as much as you can. And if you do happen to get sick yourself, definitely isolate yourself so you're not getting other people sick. Um, but it really is, it's 1% to 3% of the population that ends up passing from COVID-19 coronavirus. So if you're doing everything you can do, you're eating healthy, you're getting your sleep, and you're at a you know relatively young age, you're not probably not going to die from this. But it is important to isolate yourself if you do get sick. Because uh, elderly populations at a lot higher risk. Uh, if I remember the numbers, it was like 1.4%, I think, from people 40 to 50 died. And then it went up, I want to say, to like 4% from uh, 50 to 60. But when you start getting above 60, it, it got into double-digit death rate. And then, or at least for sure, 70 and above was double-digit. 80 was way higher than you'd like to see. So... Our elderly population is at a serious risk with this coronavirus going around. So if you do get sick, isolate yourself so you're not getting other people sick. Um, but what you can mainly be doing is getting your seeds and getting your plants growing and getting some healthy food stocked away in the refrigerator. Um, but I like the idea of growing as much as you can because this is going to last for a while. Um, the peak infection is not supposed to be made possibly for a couple months out yet. So you're talking gardening season. So get you some radishes, get you some uh, lettuce going, get you some peas, get you some spinach for that early season stuff, and get that nice healthy food in your body. If you haven't planted your perennials, get them in, because we got a bunch of stuff comes back for us every year, like our raspberries, our strawberries, our blackberries. And eventually when these 30 fruit trees are putting off fruit, we're really gonna have a lot of vitamin C right in the backyard. So definitely a great way to stay healthy, whether it's a pandemic year or just any other regular year. Um, growing your food out in the food forest is the way to go. But uh, back to this COVID-19, it is something to take serious. Like I said, 45% uh, of the population could get it in the U.S. So they're literally flipping a coin. They got no clue. It's a 50-50. You could get it. You might not. Um, and if you're talking only 1% of 1.4 or 145 million people, which is about 45% of the country, that could be a million and a half deaths. So this is unprecedented. We've never really seen anything like this uh, in recent times and definitely in recent times in America. Uh, so it's pretty serious. But I recommend, like I said, 
just take care of yourself. Don't freak out because stress is uh, hard on hard on the health too. So you gotta not be too stressed. Just be confident that if you get your sleep, you stay healthy. You're eating your healthy food, and more importantly, you're growing your own healthy food. So you know exactly what's on it. No chemicals. You know exactly where it came from. And uh, plus, it might not be so bad to not have to go out to get a lot of your food here. As if this sickness really spreads. It might be nice to be able to make a meal right out of your backyard. So that's a big part of the reason that we do this kind of stuff. Um, I usually say I'm paranoid about this kind of stuff, but now that there is a pandemic going around, I get to say it's not paranoia, it's real life. <laughs> so unfortunately, we do got to pay attention to this stuff. Um, grow your own healthy food and you'll be ready in case this pandemic gets any worse. Let me take you outside and show you a little bit of work we've been doing to get ready for this spring. Hey, popped outside. This is what we've been up to. Got some nice weather. So we're getting a little bit of a raised bed going. We already had our dam right here and our trench over this way holding a lot of water. But in the springtime, we can have too much water sometimes in Michigan with this relatively flat country we have around here. And that water just kind of slowly makes its way through here. And we're slowing it down, which is really good for these fruit trees and some of these perennials. But sometimes it can be too much for the annuals in the early spring. So we're going to give that water a little bit of place to go. And also we're going to raise this up and do a bit of an experiment right through the middle of the food forest here. So we're kind of putting our clay along the outside. And I got a little bit of this organic peat moss soil that I get for free. So this is kind of what it's going to look like once we top it off with some peat moss and then we're going to do newspaper and wood chips just like we always do with that back to eating method but we're actually raising up the soil itself over this way you can see that's a shallow trench there and we got a pretty deep trench over here it's going to hold an awful lot of water and hopefully not be flooded out this spring Maybe put them peppers that we're working on in the basement right here. Give them a nice shot at uh, not having too wet of feet. Full sun right out in the middle of the food forest. I think this would be a real nice place to put them. So I think that's what we're going to do. And also it gets, lets me get these bags picked up and taken care of. I was hoping they'd keep the deer out of here, but they only work a little bit. Deer have been trimming on these trees. The theme is always, we're getting the fence up this spring, so that's getting really close. We can't wait to do that. But we're getting a little bit of cleanup done. I'm going to come through with the lawnmower probably and just whip down all these old tomatoes and flowers that I probably should have got down already. But we'll just knock them out real quick, let them mulch in. And uh, maybe look at trying some other stuff out back too. We tried cucumbers right out back. It was a little too wet for them. So that's why we want to try some other experiments like this. But well, we are going to be adding a little bit of wood chips and planting right into this whole area. That's a ready-made garden. And we're just kind of learning our lesson on what plant sites grow where and how to keep their feet a little drier. Although last year was epic flooding season, so maybe last year was a bit of a fluke and this will work a tad bit better this year. We weren't able to garden this last year because it was freshly done midsummer, but it should be good for this year. So lots of room to plant this year. And lots of little experiments coming along. And we'll probably find a nice home for our peppers right in the middle with the nice raised bed we're working on. So if you like that, keep following along. Got lots more experiments to go. I was over this way. And we got some carrots popping up. We're going to have tomatoes going back in over here again. But some of our carrots that we're hoping are going to give us seed this year are just starting to slowly come through that light layer of wood chips. There's a carrot right there. I don't see a flower coming off of that one, but so some of them are sprouting back to life. That's interesting to see. So hopefully we'll be getting seed from this whole area. And I can't remember the name of the weed that can pollinate carrots, but we're going to be trying to pull that anywhere and everywhere we see it and try to keep this as good as we can for getting pure carrot seeds we also have a bunch of carrots in over here that we're going to hope we're going to give a seed this year 
So it could be a bunch of carrot seeds coming out. It'd be pretty interesting. Fruit trees over here are faring a little bit better. The deer uh, don't seem to come quite this far in quite as often. They do. I'll snap a quick video in here of how close they can really get. But uh, they've been taking it pretty easy on these trees. So some of them are getting a little bit bigger. That's our nectarine there. Our plum over here getting quite big. This apple's been pruned down a little bit here. That's all right though. Grapevine's doing pretty good. Been pruning them back a bit. Time to spray the fruit trees for the first bud. It's like time time. I almost did that tonight, but we're gonna be doing that real quick. Found some onions over here. Making a run from last year. It's not kind of interesting. So we'll keep an eye out for them. Have some early harvest on them onions, maybe. But well, lots of work to do, and we're going to keep on doing it. Have a good time out back. Just going a little bit at a time. It's a lot of work, but we have fun with it. And we'll keep you updated. See you on the next one. What's up, friends? I don't know if you believe me that we got a lot of deer around here. I sure hope that focuses in. Yeah, this is right out my uh, in my front yard. So there is a deer standing in the daylight of my porch light here. That's got to be within seven feet from my front door. And it can't be bothered. Oh, there's two deer now that I can see a little bit better. So then we'll probably make their way around to the friendly food forest and have a little snack on a pear tree or an apple tree. So I hope they have a good time because they're getting fenced out this spring. But it is pretty darn interesting to see an animal that big that's relatively harmless to us humans as long as they're not fenced in and uh, that close to your front door. Pretty interesting yeah, life out in the country. Alright, we'll see ya. I just had to show you that. It was too interesting. Cheers.